How you doing? Thank you for tuning in to this here video presentation by Mr. Larry Whittington, or as he want to be known, Mr. Witt. Mr. Whittington knows all about mathematics, and that is why he founded the Fort Bend Tutorings. Today we're going to learn about word problems. Not the kind where you curse people out, but the mathematical kinds. The kind I don't be understanding at all. Alright, get your ink pen and your pencil ready. Take notes, because you're finna learn from Mr. Witt. Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Larry Whittington with Fort Bend Tutoring and today's lesson is going to be about consecutive integer word problems. This is going to be part two of our word problem series. Anytime we're dealing with consecutive integers, please understand that we're just talking about numbers that follow one another. For instance, six, seven, and eight are consecutive integers. So here in our first problem, it says the sum of three consecutive integers is 84 find the integers. The first thing I'm going to do is define my three consecutive integers. So I'll have my first integer as my unknown. That's going to be my variable x. The second integer that I'll have is going to be one more than my first integer. So I can define that as x plus one. All right. Then for my third consecutive integer, that's going to be two more than my original value, so I'm going to define that as x plus 2. So this will ensure that my first value and my second value and my third value will definitely be consecutive integers. All right. We were told that the sum of these three consecutive integers is 84, which means we need to add these three values together and have it equal to 84. So here's going to be our equation. We'll have x plus x plus 1, which is the second value, plus x plus 2 all equal to 84. From there I'm going to combine my like terms and then solve for the variable. So I have 1, 2, 3 x's so adding those together you'll have 3 x then combining 1 plus 2 that'll be a positive 3 and that equals to 84. From there I'll be solving this two-step equation here by subtracting 3 to both sides of the equal sign my 3's will cancel out on the left side and then I'll be bringing down my 3x, the term with a variable in it, which now equals to 84 minus 3, which is 81. My next step is then to divide both sides by 3. So once I divide by 3, I end up with x equaling to 27. So I now know that my smallest value of these three consecutive integers is 27. So let's go ahead and set that up. Go back to where we have our values defined. So the first value is x, which we now know is 27. Then if I were to add 1 to 27, I would end up with 28. If I were to add 2 to 27, I would end up with 29. So the three consecutive integers that add to 84 is 27, 28, and 29. So those are our answers to the question, 27, 28, and 29. That's it. That was problem number one, ladies and gentlemen. Done and done. Let's check out problem number two. In problem number two, it says, if the larger of two consecutive integers is subtracted from twice the smaller, the result is 21 find the integers. So here I'm only dealing with two consecutive integers. So the first thing I want to do once again is define my values. So I have my first value which is going to be x whereas my second consecutive integer will be x plus 1. Remember consecutive integers are separated by 1. So I start out with x and then my next one is x plus 1. From there we're going to go ahead and set up our equation. It says if the larger of the two consecutive integers which in this case would be x plus plus 1 is subtracted from twice the smaller, the result is 21. Anytime you have the phrase subtracted from, you always put the second part first. So keep in mind, phrases such as less than and subtracted from, the second part of that sentence, it will definitely go first. So in this sentence, the second part is twice the smaller. So that's the part I'm going to put first. So I'll write this as 2x twice the smaller minus the larger of the two consecutive integers which is x plus 1. You'll need parentheses around that greater value, that x plus 1, so that we can find the opposite of it. That's what that minus sign is. That negative sign is taking the opposite of our larger consecutive integer. So we now have 2x minus the quantity of x plus 1 and remember it's supposed to equal to 21. So once I have this equation here, we'll go ahead and solve it by first of all doing my favorite property in the world, the distributive property. So I'm going to get my arrows, 
popping, ladies and gentlemen. So I'll rewrite this now as 2x minus x minus 1 equals to 21. Remember that negative in front of the parentheses is negative 1, and that is being multiplied times everything inside of the parentheses there. My next step is to combine my like terms. So I know that 2x minus x, combining these two terms here, will give me x. So now we have x minus 1 equals to 21. And from there, we're going to add 1 to both sides of the equal sign. So adding 1 to both sides of the equal sign gives me a result that is x equals to 22. So once I have my value of 22, we can go back to where we had our two integers defined. And we now know that x equals to 22. And then x plus 1 would be 23. And that would be the solution to the problem. Just like that, ladies and gentlemen. Done and done. All right, let's move on to our next problem here. Okay, in our next example here, problem number three, it says the sum of the least and greatest consecutive integer is 32 more than the middle integer. Find the three integers. We have three consecutive integers. We know that because they said that the numbers were consecutive and that we had three integers. So I'll be starting out by defining those three integers. So I have my first integer, the second integer, and the third integer that I'll be defining here. I don't know anything about the first integer, so that's going to be x. Remember that my second integer is going to be one more than that, so it'll be x plus 1. And then finally, the third integer is x plus 2. OK, so that's going to be my definition of those three consecutive integers. From there, let's go ahead and set up our equation here. It says that the sum of the least and the greatest, so my least consecutive integer is x, whereas my greatest consecutive integer would have to be x plus 2. Since they're referring to the sum of these two numbers, we'll need to add them together. So I'll write my equation as x plus that third integer, which is x plus 2. It says that it's going to be equal to, because of the word is, 32 more than the middle integer. So this is going to be 32 plus my middle integer, that second integer, which is x plus 1. And this is going to be my equation right here, ladies and gentlemen. x plus x plus 2 equals to 32 plus x plus 1. All right. From there, we're going to be solving for the variable x. So that means I'm going to start out by combining my like terms on the left side of the equal sign and on the right. So x plus x will always give me 2x plus 2, which equals 2. My x I'll be bringing down, and 32 plus 1 is always 33. I prefer to attack the variables first, so that means I'm going to be isolating my variable on one side of the equal sign. I'm going to do that by subtracting x to both sides of the equal sign here. My x's cancel out. On the left side, 2x minus x equals to 1x plus 2, which now equals to 33. From there, I'll be subtracting 2 to both sides, and I'll end up with x equals to 31, ladies and gentlemen. All right, and that would be my first value. From here, I'll go back to my definitions, and I know that x is 31. Adding 1 to 31, I end up with 32. And adding 2 to 31, I end up with 33. So my three consecutive integers, whose sum of the least and greatest would be equal to 32 more than the middle integer, would be 31, 32, and 33. And this is the solution to my word problem here. All right, I like red boxes around my answers, by the way. All right, just in case you wanted to know. Yep, so that was that problem, ladies and gentlemen. That was problem number three. Let's move on to the next one. All right, in our next example here, it says to find three consecutive integers if twice the middle integer is equal to the sum of the first and the third. So I know I'm dealing with three consecutive integers, so I'm going to always start by defining those three integers. So I have the first, second, and third integer that I need to define. I don't know what the first one is, so that's going to be my variable x. The second one, since it's consecutive, will be x plus 1. And then the third one will be x plus 2. All right? So that's my initial setup, defining the values. So the relationship of these three consecutive integers is if twice the middle integer, that means 2 times x plus 1, is equal to the sum of the first and the third. So that means I'll be adding the first, which is x, plus the third, which is x plus 2. So this is going to be my setup here, ladies and gentlemen, just like this. From here, I would get to do my favorite property again, the distributive property. So I get to get my arrows popping. All right, so multiplying everything inside of the parentheses by 2, I end up now with 2x plus 2, 
which equals 2 over there on the right side we can combine our like terms x plus x is 2x plus 2 all right next ladies and gentlemen we'll subtract 2x to both sides my 2x's cancel out and I end up with 2 equals a 2 now what does that mean anytime your variable cancels out there could be two possibilities that you could be dealing with one is that if the statement here is false that means you simply have no solution to the problem in this case 2 does equal to 2 so we have a true statement anytime you have a true statement that means that any integer in this case will solve our problem so that means that X could be any number ladies and gentlemen and it would still work out just fine so all we need to note here ladies and gentlemen is that X is in the subset of all integers that's it so as long as you have an integer for X then the answer will work just fine so many times the teacher will have you give them a solution anyway so if you had to give a concrete solution you could just choose any integer and then go from there for instance if I say that the first integer is 5 the second integer would be 6 and then the third integer would be 7 so that being the case ladies and gentlemen if we were to test this out to see if it's correct it says that twice the middle integer which is 6 times 2 that would be 12 right would have to be equal to the sum of the first and third which is 5 plus 7 which is also 12 so we know that that works but that's the whole point ladies and gentlemen any number that I chose would have worked just fine and solved this equation so your solution is any integer from the set of all integers ladies and gentlemen you can grab any integer and that'll make that problem true done and done ladies and gentlemen so there you have it X is any integer in the set of integers ladies and gentlemen that's it that's problem number four all right so be aware of those if your variable ever cancels out okay in our fifth example here we have the following problem it says to find four consecutive multiples of five whose sum is 90 notice that this particular problem is different from the others because it doesn't just say that it's consecutive integers it says it's four consecutive multiples of five that means that my first second third and fourth value has to be a multiple of five so let's see how I would set that up alright so first of all we don't know what that first value is so that's definitely going to be X but we do know that the second value is going to be our original value plus five our third value would be our original value plus 10 and then our fourth value would be our original value plus 15 that would ensure that these would definitely be consecutive multiples of 5 we know that the question is asking us for a sum that equals to 90 so that means I'll be adding all four of these values together to equal to 90 so let's see what that looks like I'll be writing my equation as x plus x plus 5 plus x plus 10 plus x plus 15 and that has it equal to 90 from there adding all of my like terms together I have one two three four X's so my next step is to have 4x plus the sum of 5 10 and 15 which is going to give me a value of 30 this is going to equal to 90 ladies and gentlemen from there I'll be subtracting 30 to both sides of the equal sign here my 30's cancel out I'll be bringing down 4x which equals to 60 and then I'll be dividing both sides by 4 to find out that X equals to 15 so X equals to 15 that's my first value so let's go back up here to where we have it defined if X is 15 that means that the next value consecutive multiple of 5 would have to be 20 then from there I would end up with 25 and then finally 30 if you were to add all four numbers together 15 plus 20 which is 35 35 plus 25 is going to give you 60 and then 60 plus 30 gives you 90 that confirms that our solution is correct so done and done ladies and gentlemen the solution to this problem is 15 20 25 and 30 and that's going to be that ladies and gentlemen well ladies and gentlemen this is the final problem that we had for today's lesson once again this is mr witt and fort ben tutoring this was consecutive integer word problems and as always please rate comment and subscribe and if you're able please donate peace we're going to be learning about such things as linear quadratics system of equations tables mixtures work oh lord distance interest of which i don't have much investment
This is my favorite one. I'm going to name my grandbaby consecutive integers. <laughs> Algebraic translations and percents. I understand a little bit about percents. I know that 50% off is pretty good. <laughs>